So we're here with Michael Dollard from Tanko. Uh, I'm right in saying you're the sales manager or area sales manager for Ireland and the UK. Yeah, I'm the uh, sales manager for Ireland and the UK, so I look after all the sales and dealer support and all that for Ireland and throughout the UK. When the boys are out uh, getting the demo of the, the Tanko Triples, they joked a little bit about getting one of your wrappers and yeah. uh, you dropped one up since. Yeah, I did, yeah. So this is our demo machine this year. So uh, so what this is, is uh, this is one of the S-Series wrappers. This is an S200. Uh, so we have an S100 and a 300 as well. So 100 is one arm, 200 is two arms, and the three has three plastic arms on it. Okay. So, and uh, is this a popular machine in Ireland or? Uh, in Ireland we'd mostly see these uh, sort of south and east coast like Cork, Waterford, uh, Kilkenny, Carlow, Kildare. Uh, not that many of them up here in the north. There are a couple in the southwest of the north uh, on use on the three point linkage but mostly in Ireland uh, they go on the telehandler. And then in the UK, usually Scotland, the borders area. Um, but we have started to see a bit more um, interest in them in the southern part of the UK. Where's your most popular country for these machines? Uh, probably Korea. Korea? South Korea, yeah. And what, what are they wrapping in, in Korea? Uh, they would do uh, grass silage, you know, May, June time, but uh, the bulk of the wrapping would be um, the rice straw after the, after okay. the harvest in October, November time. Yeah. yeah. That's very interesting. Have you been out there to see that? No, I haven't myself, no. <laughs> Some of the other guys from the factory have been, so, yeah. 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 They're very uh, high, uh, high um, output guys out there, you know, okay, they're, yeah. they're putting a lot of bales through the machines every year. So have you ever seen any problems, some of those places where there's a high output on the machine? Yeah. That's the place to go Well, it feedback. is, yeah, like, and they're pretty good on feedback as, as well. Uh, but, uh, no, the machines generally do run fairly um, trouble-free, yeah. There would be uh, quite a few also go to Germany um, and Austria. Austria would be a big country for them. Okay. Uh, again, in those countries, it's, it's mostly three-point linkage, front or rear again. So uh, these S-Series machines, uh, so the S-Series is out since uh, 15, we started to have the first of them out. So really 16 season was when the S-Series came out. Uh, before that, it was a 1300 series, so you had a 10 and a 20, single arm and double arm. And before that, there were 1300s. So these machines are out a long time. So on, for use on the telehandler, you know, they're used for a wrap and stack. The bales are drawn into the yard. It's just in some areas, people just prefer to do that. Um, this machine is very similar to the uh, square bale version of it, which when we had the 1300 series, the square bale machine is the 1500 series. And um, new for this year were the Q series square bale wrappers. So use a lot of the same features. They're um, fully automatic telescopic cutter, proportional hydraulics, one piece chassis. The chassis is all uh, one folded piece of uh, pipe. Um, and then similar dispensers and uh, electronics on the machine as well, just in the fill and break sensors and um, safeties and that. Um, where, where are these machines produced? So uh, all, the, all our machines are, ba are made in the factory in uh, Carlow. So Tanko are based in Bagnallstown. Tanko is 50 six years old this year. Uh, so everything has always been made in Bagnall's Town. What would be the hourly output of a machine like this? So it depends on a, a number of factors. One is how far you have to drive from when you pick up the bales, you drop it, how fast are the bales coming in. But somewhere in around 70, 70, 80 bales an hour is what, you know, contractors would be getting out of them when they're, you know, in the thick of things out in, the, you know, in the season. And would an older machine struggle with oil flow for the likes of that wrapper? Or? Um, no, usually they, they don't like a lot of oil. So like thir uh, 40 litres maximum is, is the oil requirement for them. Um, so um, no, it doesn't take a whole lot to drive them. They're, they're fairly efficient machines that way. And the, the weight of that machine then? Uh, this machine here is about 740 kilos. The three arm machine is about uh, 120 kilos more. So a lot of uh, telehandlers are more than ample for them. But where this machine comes into its own is in the yard. In the like yard. You're doing two yeah. functions in one, you're wrapping and stacking. So it's mm -hmm. very, very quick um, with that. And you can see um, 
the machine, the way it operates, like it's very smooth on itself. It's very it is, easy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's a, like a seamless integration there between uh, one fun ending one function to the start of the next one. So that's where it sort of gets its speed and ease of ease of uh, use and operator visibility. So is it a big issue or no? Uh, on the side boom machine, no matter what you're using them for, like there is a bit of a restriction there in the side in, in the boom, but. Uh, um, no, they, you would generally wrap from left to right, you know, and you can swap over the smooth rollers if you had a center uh, pivot machine, like a, a TM or anything like that, and you prefer to go right to left, you can swap over the smooth and the, and the, the angled roller so that you can stack the other way if you want. The idea is you always keep the smooth roller against your last bail placed and, and work back across. Michael, can you tell us a bit more about the, the function of the machine so, and uh, setup? This machine is uh, fitted with an end tip unit, so you'll see the little roller there uh, crossways on it. So uh, there is a sensor on the back of that, so when you go into the next bale um, and it pushes that roller, it activates the autoload. So the rollers will autoload themselves, and if you've auto uh, wrap turned on, uh, once it's loaded it will then start wrapping. So the only time you have to press the button on the box is to actually unload the bale. And the reason it's like that is, uh, you know, sometimes you can, people will want to end tip with it, or sometimes they'll just want a little bit more more control over the um, over the unloading. So just get the bale placed and right. 